When we like someone, we tend to see the best in them. If we don't like them, we tend to see the worst. If I like the guy, all he's jumping around tells me he's enthusiastic. If I don't like him, he's an idiot. <laughs> if I like the woman, she's kind. If I don't like her, she's weak. We make those decisions and put those filters in very, very quickly. There are actually only six things that any of us do on a day-to-day -day basis apart from body functions and urges. Five of them are we go into the world and we have experiences through our senses. And on those experiences that we have through our senses, we make all of our thousands of daily decisions by what comes in through our senses. There's only one other thing we do besides using our senses, and you're all doing it now. What do you think it is? Thinking? Did someone say thinking? Underneath thinking. Listening. Do you mean hearing or listening? Oh, I hate it when people say that because you're so right. <laughs> Listening is different from hearing. We actually process language. We put our experiences into words. The experiences have come in through our senses. We put them into words. And then we explain them to ourselves. Then we explain them to other people. I'm doing it right now. I'm explaining my experiences to you. And you are sitting there and you're having things come in through your senses. And you're probably talking to yourselves. You're either saying, this guy's a lot of rubbish or he's brilliant or I should have had more, more chocolate with my lunch. It doesn't matter. You're talking to yourselves. But here's where it becomes interesting. As your experiences become words, your words become thoughts. Your thoughts become ideas. Your ideas become actions. Your actions become habits. Your habits make up your personality. Your personality drives your destiny. And it happens very fast. We do it in a flash. We make sense of the world in a flash. But what's really interesting is this, that as your experiences become words, words, thoughts, thoughts, ideas, it's at the idea stage that most of life and most of business exists. Because all business, no matter what you do, is about taking good ideas to market, taking good ideas to other people. You are, everybody in here is a unique part of the idea delivery system. The better your idea, see, the better your idea, the better you are at packaging your ideas and squirting them into the hearts and minds of other people, the more success you'll have. The worse you are at it, the more life is a struggle. So it's all about how you present yourselves to deliver those ideas, how you package them, and then how you put them in the heart and the mind so they're memorable of other people. So in order to do that, you see, experiences, words, words, thoughts, thoughts, ideas. We take our ideas to other people with language, with words. And we do it in three ways. We do it through something called conversation. We do it through something called communication, and we do it through something called parallel experience. Without, by far, the most powerful way is parallel experience, where we use pictures, short stories, and words to represent what we want. Let's talk for a second about conversation. Conversation, and especially small talk, which is really overlooked, and I do a lot of work with, with executives who think, uh, think that small talk is a waste of time. No, it's not. It's the greatest way to, to, to create, start creating relationships. But Conversation is the informal exchange of ideas and opinions to create a, to, to, to build a bond with people. Communication, though, is very, very different. Communication is different because, because communication is goal-oriented. If I want my daughter to tidy her room and she doesn't tidy her room, my communication failed. The meaning of communication is the response you get. So in order for communication to work, you have to know what you want in the positive, find out what you're getting, and change what you do till you get what you want. And here's why it's very important that you do it in the positive, because all language is processed subconsciously. Only negation is processed consciously. So does anybody here have a dog? Can you uh, make a picture in your mind's eye of yourself not feeding your dog? Can anybody? How about you taking your dog for a walk? Is that a picture of you not feeding your dog? Yeah, taking your dog for a walk. Yeah, yeah, because you can't make negative pictures. You can't do that. Uh, and, and when I say pictures, does everybody here know where the milk is in their refrigerator? Do you know where it is in your refrigerator? You do? How did you do that? You can see it, right? You can, we can do that. We can see it. That's as good as your pictures get. But that is the primary language of the brain, pictures, sounds, and feelings that we flick to before we put stuff into words. So when you're talking to somebody, they will first start to access pictures, sounds, and feelings before, fractionally before they start to process language. So if you can get in on, on that level, you have a, a lot of power over somebody. So if you teach your dog to jump up by saying jump up, what will your dog do if you say don't jump up without changing your voice tone? It'll jump up because don't isn't language. 
You see, all language is processed subconsciously. Only negation is processed consciously. And so if you say to a client, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, what have you actually said? You said, hesitate to contact me. I said, don't. So you figure out what I'm talking about. People who are successful in communication put their ideas into the positive. So let's say I'm a travel agent. And someone comes into my travel agency and said, I want to go on holiday. If I could spot, let's say that they are feeling-based, kinesthetic, I would say to them, I've got a great place for you. Uh, the sand is soft, the water's warm, and the beds are comfortable. I'm telling what it feels like. Uh, if they were uh, auditory, sound, I would say to them, I've got a great place for you. All you can hear are the waves and the gulls. It's, it's away from all the noise of the city. I'm telling what it sounds like. And if they're visual, I say, look at the pictures. So when you're connecting, even with your whole family, go home and find out what every member of your family, what their primary sense is, and connect with them on that level. I have five children. I have at least one of each. To my, to my visual child, who talks in the visual, I say, how does this look to you? How do you see this working out? To my auditory child, I say, how does this sound to you? And to my kinesthetic, feeling-based child, I say, how do you feel about this? Because the point is that these, this goes into them. It's like the square peg, the round peg, and the triangular peg. You get your message in the right hole, and people will listen to it. OK, this is all you need to do when you start connecting on a business level like this, is just to finesse it a bit more and get good at it. So the ability to speak up. Can you tell me two superpowers? Feedback and curiosity, yeah. Two more? Enthusiasm, enthusiasm imagination, yeah. Um, five ways, give me two ways to make a good first impression. Eye contact. What's the first one? Adjust your attitude. Okay, look up in the eye, smile, open your body language and synchronize. Five rules of communication. What's the main, main rule of communication? Know what you want in the positive and you'll get it. It's like people say, nothing happens in my life. They say, well, what do you dream of? They say, I have no dreams. Well, you know what? You know why your dreams can't come true? You haven't got any. Five ways to be socially smarter. Two of them. Next one. We're well, walking a little bit more slowly. And head for the middle of the room. So, to, so if you've got any, any events planned later, I hope you're going to go out and psych everybody out. Before I finish, I have a quick story, because really, in a way, it, it's all about networking. Um, I think I've mentioned I live on a farm in Canada. I have five children, uh, all grown up now in their 40s, but uh, one of them is, is just 30-odd. But when, uh, when Kate, who's now 32, uh, when Kate was 13, uh, she came to me one day on the farm and said, Daddy, they've opened an aromatherapy store in our local village. Will you drive me there so I can see it? So I drove Kate to the village and we went to the store. And once we were there, Kate looked around and I got speaking to Sandy, the woman who owns the store. And Sandy was telling me that she'd given up her career, in uh, corporate career, to open an aromatherapy store, which was her dream and I said you know it's interesting you say that because I've been in photography for 25 years but I'm getting out of it because I've met so many people with incredible potential but no people skills so I'm going to they're like roses with rubber bands around them they'll never blossom until somebody takes the rubber band off and they can blossom so I'm going to to, to give everything my photography up I'm going to go into this I'm going to become the world's greatest expert in my own mind at least and I'm going to talk to people uh, who, who need these people's skills. And we talked a bit like that. A week later, Sandy phoned me and said, I'm having some people around to my house to, to talk about aromatherapy. Would you like to come and spend five minutes talking about what you're doing? I said, yeah, I would love to. And I went around there. Um, about a, another week later, I got a phone call from a woman who said, I was at Sandy's house. We have a woman's networking group in the region I live at. And we meet at the shrimp cocktail restaurant the first Tuesday of every month for lunch. Will you come and talk to my group? I said, Oh, absolutely, I'd love to go and talk to your group. So I went. Um, a couple of weeks later, a guy phones and said, uh, my cousin was at, uh, at that lunch, and another cousin was at that lunch. I have 200 people in a, a real estate networking group. Could you put on a little workshop for them? I said, yeah, of course I will. I'd love to. And, and I went there and I did it. Um, about within two months from then, I got a phone call saying, we're the staging company for AT&T Canada. And we are having our, we've been, we've been following, we know what you've been doing. We'd like to invite you to be the kickoff speaker at the Metro Convention Center to speak to 1,600 people. 
Um, and I went there and I did it and it kick-started my career. It led me to a, a fabulous publishing uh, deal in the States, lots of, of, of corporate events, uh, to me, meeting Susan from, from National Speakers, uh, from Susan getting me to, introducing me to the Women's Food Service Forum, for me to being here today, for me to getting to meet all of you and have a respect and have some fun with you. Uh, but the moral of the story is never turn down an invitation from your 13-year-old daughter to visit an aromatherapy store <laughs> that's opened in your local village because opportunities are everywhere and one thing leads to another. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank Workout, too. <laughs> Thank you.